Donna Barnett with Sanctuary Medicinals, and we're here in Tampa, Florida at KushCon 2022. <laughs> Sanctuary TV, your source for cannabis news and industry coverage. Contributing original content from Sanctuary Florida and curating lifestyle, wellness, culture, and education. We have our future governor, Nikki Payne. Sanctuary Media recently visited the first ever KushCon in Tampa, Florida to support the local community and participate in the continued advocacy for medical cannabis. As Florida's largest hemp, CBD, and wellness trade show, the two-day event attracts manufacturers, growers, labs, farms, law and consulting firms, nonprofit organizations and associations, and more. The stigmas that used to be there aren't there anymore. The generations above us, currently and below us, are all pushing for the same thing. Commissioner Freed is, is spearheading a lot of those conversations and doing a damn good job to win it. Well over 150 booths, representing many of the leading brands in the sector, gathered to speak with distributors, consumers, and newcomers to the field. So if you can introduce yourself and your company really quick for us. Hi, my name is Blake Henry. I'm with RDSP Farms out of Southern Oregon. We're a USDA certified uh, all organic farm. We came to KushCon to really spread the word about our product. We, we stand by it. We love to share it with everyone else. Awesome. So you guys have any business partnerships in Tampa or is this pretty much the first time you guys are taking a foothold in here? This is one of our first steps into Florida and so they're super excited to meet a bunch of new people, new businesses, retailers. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for talking with me. We are so happy to have you here in Tampa and at KushCon this year. Appreciate it. Thank you. Exhibitors included CBD, Delta 8, and Delta 10 brands, local MMJ doctors, nonprofit organizations, holistic health providers, and cultivation engineers. While recreational marijuana in Florida isn't legal, medical marijuana is already a billion dollar industry in the state and it's only expected to grow. Reports state that even though Florida is a very structured medical state, if it were a country, it would be the third largest country of revenue for cannabis in the world. During the pandemic, medical marijuana prescriptions in Florida reportedly ballooned from just below 300,000 to 700,000, creating a massive opportunity for business owners in the state. So what brings you to KushCon this year? Uh, man, this is our first festival actually. Uh, we're really getting our product out there. Uh, we just opened up in, in Western Chapel, so this is our opening day for the rest of the world. Awesome. Tell me a little bit about what you offer, what really differentiates you from some of the other vendors here. Yeah, so we're actually the only place in the world that actually makes our edibles fresh. All of our recipes are something we've worked on for the past two years, developing, redeveloping, just changing the recipe and making sure it's the best quality product out there. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us. And I hope that the rest of your cookies sell. Convention attendees were invited to participate in any of the over 100 educational sessions that included opinions and research from professionals within Florida's hemp industry. Structured breakout sessions provided the opportunity to network with distributors and retailers and meet like-minded patients and business owners in the space. So tell me how you like KushCon this year. I liked it. It was a lot of fun. Did you see anything that you weren't expecting? Or tell me a little bit about what your favorite things were. Well, I saw a lot that I uh, was not expecting. Yeah, there was a lot of stuff about the industry itself, uh, which was fascinating and informative. Um, we saw a lot of new products as well, with stuff I've never been exposed to. Do you think you'll come back to KushCon next year? Absolutely, and I'll bring my friends. Are you a medicinal user? And if so, are there any dispensaries that are really intriguing to you? Dispensaries I like. I really like Sanctuary. Truly, uh, not as dynamic as they need to be. But really, I like Sanctuary. And when I go in there, I really don't know what I should about all the products, the benefits, the medicinal benefits. Uh, and they explain that very clearly. And uh, their product is good as well. Panel speakers included founders, owners, CEOs, doctors, as well as industry advocates. What do you think that this country needs to see to be able to actually get the change that you're hoping for? We need to get legislators educated to understand that their constituents approve of medical cannabis and adult use cannabis. 92% agree on medical cannabis and about 69% agree on adult use right now. So do you think that the push needs to come from consumers, that from businesses, or both? Both. We need to educate our legislators because they're writing the laws. They're writing the regulations, 
and we need to move them forward and let them know that this is what is necessary for our state to move forward, both economically and health -wise. A healthy community makes for a healthy state. Keynote speakers held panels, including topics on the future of cannabis and hemp in Florida, cannabis and hemp for seniors, financing for business, cannabis and pets, Florida regulations, franchising, sustainability, the need for recreational marijuana to be legal and diverse, and an appearance by Nikki Fried, Florida's Commissioner of Agriculture and current Governor Candidate for the state. So I'm with Sanctuary Medicinals, we're dispensary medicinal only, and so I wanted to kind of get your input on what do you think is the most important for dispensaries locally to um, really push forward the efforts that you, hopefully as Governor, are going to be pushing moving forward. You know, so much of this movement has been a movement. It's about advocacy, it's about education, and right now we've got 700,000 plus patients on the registry. That is a huge movement, that if those 700,000 patients understand the power that they have on not only you know educating their neighbors, educating their family members, but also then educating the legislature and working towards all of these things that we want to talk about. This is a really big power. After two days of education and networking, convention attendees came together for the after party. Hosted just outside the Tampa Convention Center on the landing, the official after party featured CBD beverages, bar, concessions, and live music from Electric Avenue. Overall, attendees called KushCon a great success, pairing networking and discovery with advocacy and education among the biggest names in the legal hemp, CBD, and wellness industry. So tell me a little bit about how you like KushCon this year. Um, it was awesome. I'm going to say there was plenty of network to experience. That's what I was coming here for, to make sure I networked and met some really cool and awesome people that definitely happened and more, you know. So I'm so glad for this event because it just allows people like us to be able to find resources that we really need, like wholesale consumers, you know, influencers and all types of stuff out here. So this was like a perfect event for me. I'm from Texas, San Antonio, Texas. I'm actually trying to promote small businesses and brands. So like coming out here was just like the perfect thing for me. Will you come back again next year? Oh yeah, for sure. I will be here next year. Sanctuary TV is dedicated to helping consumers and patients thrive by building bridges of education between the community, producers, processors and retailers, and more.